Habari. Salam alaikum. Sak passe and welcome to another edition of Font on From. I'm your host, Sarah Unyango. Today, we'll be discussing the little known part of Canadian and sports history we call the Colored Hockey League of the Maritimes. Many blacks in North America view ice hockey as a fast, physical, and expensive sport whose participants are exclusively white, which is why for many of us, this sport does not have the same religion-like status it has in the hearts and minds of other Canadians. There are still relatively few black players in the NHL, and we get the impression that the inclusion of black players into the league is a recent development without any historical background. However, African Canadians have played a significant role in hockey since the turn of the century, beginning with the Colored League of the Maritimes, which is the focus of today's show. And we have two guests who are going to tell us about this league. Well, welcome, uh, Robert Dawson and Hazel Lucas. Thank you very much for uh, coming in to talk to us about this uh, illustrious history. Uh, Bob, can Thank you please you. Uh, just tell our viewers who you are, first of all? Um, Bob Dawson, I'm from uh, Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. Mm -hmm. I might add, Nova Scotia, perhaps as you've read or know, is, uh, is considered to be the birthplace of uh, hockey. Um, I uh, uh, lived in Dartmouth, uh, of course, and uh, born and raised there. Uh, played hockey, uh, uh, among other things. But hockey seemed to be my, my passion. Uh, even after high school, I uh, went on to play uh, at St. Mary's University in Halifax and was uh, the first black to play in the uh, uh, Atlantic Intercollegiate Hockey League. And ironically enough, uh, uh, shortly after, I think about two years after, Daryl Maxwell and uh, Percy uh, Paris uh, joined the team. And um, an amazing thing happened to us. Uh, I guess when we were on a road trip to New Brunswick, uh, the coach put us, uh, put the three of us out uh, on a forward line, uh, which was kind of unique and I don't think ever happened uh, anywhere in Canada. So I think we became the first all black uh, line uh, in Canadian uh, university and college history. Um, I um, have, I continue to play hockey uh, upon moving here uh, to uh, Ottawa. Been here for over 30 years. Uh, I have a passion for the game and still continue to play. Mm -hmm. And Hazel, uh, who was introduced uh, to me by Robert, tell us a little about yourself. Well, my name is Hazel Lucas and I was born and raised in Truro, Nova Scotia, the home of the Sheiks. As you, you might know or you may not know that Truro is a fantastic sports town. <laughs> <laughs> it was then, it is now, mm -hmm. and I'm quite familiar with a lot of hockey players that have went on to great things. Some of them didn't make the NHL, but they certainly were, were mm -hmm. worthy of being there. And uh, I'm looking forward to uh, mm -hmm. maybe having a few and words to say. And of course, you, you've been invited into this conversation because you're a descendant of one of the members of the Colored League. Well, my, my father played on the Troll Sheiks in the 1930s, and along with him were, were two of his nephews, and most everybody on that team, one, one uh, man was my next door neighbor, you know, so uh, I'm familiar and know all of them on that team, and, uh, you know, have pleasant thoughts about them. So, Robert, uh, back to you. How did you find out about the uh, Colored League of the Maritimes? How did you come upon this history? Actually it was by accident. Uh, in talking with a friend, uh, he happened to mention uh, the existence of this league. And during a, uh, a trip uh, down home, uh, I decided I would uh, go and visit the, uh, uh, the uh, Black Cultural Center in, uh, in Dartmouth. And uh, so I did, and while there, I uh, spoke and, and, and met with uh, Henry Bishop Mm -hmm. who is the curator, as, as you know, mm -hmm. and uh, he um, uh, brought my attention to uh, the book, uh, Black Ice, the, the uh, history of the Colored uh, Hockey League, and gave me a copy, uh, which I was most grateful for because uh, I must admit, coming from uh, Nova Scotia, I had not heard of uh, that league. Is that right? Yes. And why would that be? 
Um, uh, I'm not sure exactly. Uh, I, I think uh, perhaps there, were, although there were uh, written uh, accounts uh, of that league, it was through uh, George and Daryl Fosty, who uh, I guess upon their, their research uh, with respect to the Underground Railroad, discovered references to the Colored Hockey League. And uh, as a result of that, uh, after several years of research, they uh, publish uh, the book. Mm -hmm. And Hazel, you grew up in this history. Well, so well I grew up knowing yeah. about the league. It was, mm -hmm. wasn't anything new to me, but it was uh, a surprise because I didn't really know about the teams in Dartmouth. I knew there was mm -hmm. a team in Halifax, but you know, when my, my family talked about it, it was more Amherst, New Glasgow, Spring Hill, Truro type of thing. and and. Uh, you know, it was something for them to do because in those days, you know, what could a black person do? So they, they played, you know, hockey, summertime, they played baseball. Yeah. It, and in, if you came from Truro, it was something, everyone was involved in sports in some way, whether it was just talking about it mm -hmm. <laughs> or, or participating. And we did produce a lot of uh, highly uh, uh, well, uh, Mm -hmm. well uh, players mm -hmm. and so what what fascinated you uh, most or surprised you most about what you did find out about this hockey league uh, it, it didn't surprise it, it surprised me only in the sense that here it was never written about you know even yeah. though we had a lot of oral history because in Truro you know pe and my family we did talk my parents did talk about a lot of things they you never heard people talk about the team as such they may have talked about good players but you know or this one they were so good in this and if they were good in hockey most of them were excellent in baseball also and uh, you know, so it, it wasn't a surprise. It was a, it was a surprise, like I say, to me because I didn't know the Dartmouth had a team. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and yeah. uh, uh, but uh, you know, it it just uh, it sort of warmed my heart to see something written down because, you know, we we take and we times have changed now. You 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 know because you don't live in the communities like you used to, you don't know your neighbors, uh, people, you don't have that closeness, so you don't have the oral history that you had before. Mm -hmm. And like I say, oral history does die out. Mm -hmm. But uh, so mm -hmm. for Truro, it wasn't a surprise to see this, you know, mm -hmm. to read about, about the black history, uh, the black hockey, hockey league. league. Uh, Robert, you, you know. were gonna say something? It, it was, for me, it was an important part of uh, uh, black history. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think that, uh, many of us uh, didn't know and, and the kinds of contributions and, and achievements that uh, these, uh, uh, these players uh, had, had made uh, to the game of hockey uh, for which they, uh, I think to this point, uh, have not really been duly recognized mm -hmm. uh, to the extent that they should be because they did uh, their style of play and and innovations, uh, I think made the game uh, what it is today. You know, uh, innovations uh, like what? Innovations that people should know uh, about. The, for example, the slap shot mm -hmm. uh, was uh, pioneered by Eddie Martin, uh, who uh, played with the the uh, the Eurekas, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, ironically enough, or interesting enough, I should say. That, that uh, what he did in, in terms of that aspect of the game was 25 years before um, uh, a chap by the name of uh, Bun Cook, who uh, uh, eventually went on to the NHL, uh, but it was 50 years uh, after uh, that um, uh, Boom Boom Jeffrey on. Mm -hmm. who, who perfected yeah. the, uh, the slap shot mm -hmm. and who played with the Montreal Canadiens. Mm -hmm. Now, when we talk about style of play, uh, one of the critical, uh, I think, most intriguing aspects of, of uh, that development uh, was um, uh, a goalie uh, going down on the ice to block a shot. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, also, uh, 
the, the, the fact that the individual, uh, uh, Henry Braces Franklin, mm -hmm. who was three foot four inches tall, he uh, ventured out and uh, retrieved the puck uh, outside of the net and on occasion uh, started to skate up the ice with the puck and pass it off. Mm -hmm. uh, to that point in time, uh, goaltenders did not go down on the ice. Mm -hmm. So it, it was a, a new, uh, uh, I think a, a new twist to the game that uh, uh, certainly enhanced the, uh, the pace of the game as well. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to uh, take up this uh, discussion uh, after the break, and I'm sure we're going to find out much more about other innovations mm -hmm. as well. Stay tuned. This program is brought to you by Rogers Home Phone, a better home phone service built around you. And by Rogers High Speed Internet. Welcome to the Worldwide U. Set furnishings for Ottawa's cultural window provided by EQ3, furniture and accents. For all of your gift registry, gift certificates, furniture and accessories, EQ3 in the Byword Market. And we're back. The Coloured Hockey League was an all-black ice hockey league founded in Nova Scotia in 1894, which featured teams from across Canada's maritime provinces. The league operated for several decades, lasting until around 1930. With as many as a dozen teams, over 400 African-Canadian players from across Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, and Prince Edward Island participated in competition. Their exploits have been documented by historians George and Darren Fosty in their book, Black Ice, The Lost History of the Colored Hockey League of the Maritimes, 1895-1925. And now we continue our discussion on the subject with our two guests. So Hazel, Rob, uh, Robert was telling us more about the, uh, the technical innovations of the sport, etc. But like we were saying earlier, you actually lived this history of people in your family who were in this uh, league. And what, what do you recall as a child growing up hearing about, you know, the big shot players? Or well, the really interesting plays? At, at the time, like when I grew up, you didn't hear too much about how they played because we had new players coming on the scene from Toronto and they more or less were talking about them and how good they were, like such as Art Dorrington. He was the first black to ever get a professional contract. Mm -hmm. He's a relative of mine. Mm. His brother is in the Toronto Sheiks there. Fred Dorrington is, is Art's brother. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so these are the things you heard. We, you know, we hear a lot about art. Then we heard about Chuck Maxwell, yeah. you know, uh, Manny McIntyre, who played with uh, the uh, Carnegies. Mm -hmm. He was from New Brunswick, but uh, he was still part of <laughs> the <laughs> Maritime. So therefore, mm -hmm. you know, these are the things that we heard about, not about the players back then, because to, to them it was fun. Mm -hmm. It wasn't. You know, they didn't think they were doing anything special. Mm -hmm. I do know they would do a lot of uh, sort of volunteer work, mm -hmm. not only not only uh, uh, play hockey, but they might have a, uh, put on a concert or something at the church, as my dad would say, and yeah. the money would support the church, mm -hmm. not the church, or it would support the the hospital, things like this mm -hmm. that. Uh, uh, you know, I found interesting, and as you know, I look back and you think, boy, they did that in those times, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> which, which to me was was very interesting. But we we did go into the the more into the players that were coming out of Toronto. You had you had Cloby Collins who played for years in Newfoundland. You know, you had uh, we had many many hockey players come out of out of Toronto, mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, I don't know if people would remember here in Ottawa or not, but when we had the Ottawa Hall Canadians here years ago, Chuck Maxwell played on that team oh, for years, yeah. and he played with most of these people that ended up playing in the NHL, yeah. but he didn't, oh. <laughs> because yeah. he and he and Willie O'Ree mm -hmm. were playing around the same time, mm -hmm. and they yeah. chose, uh, you know, a black person. They chose Willie, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, and as we yeah. know, there was of course there was a lot of racism. Uh, which continues to this day, but in, in the sport and especially back then. 
Oh yes, yes. I mean, you know, yeah. very much a lot of racism. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, Chuck didn't make it, he should have. Mm -hmm. uh, Her Carnegie didn't. No, the Carnegies didn't, mm -hmm. which, yeah. which they, they should have. Mm -hmm. And with, with Art uh, Dorrington, he, uh, he was about to sign a contract with the NHL, but he broke his leg, so that yeah. squashed that. So, mm -hmm. so uh, yeah, and actually, if I, if I may, mm -hmm. uh, he would have been the first uh, mm -hmm. to break into the NHL as opposed to Willie O'Ree. Mm -hmm. Had he not broken his leg. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so Robert, tell us about the Society of North American Hockey Historians and Researchers because they are a group that has been really trying to raise the profile of this history. Yes. Of um, in actually, um, uh, George and Daryl Fosty uh, the the uh, co-authors of the book, mm -hmm. uh, they had founded a, uh, a society of North American uh, hockey uh, historians and researchers back in about uh, I think 2004, and actually I think it followed uh, the publication of that book, mm -hmm. and uh, the the uh, uh, that organization is uh, is intended to uh, to um, uh, preserve and, and promote uh, the, the history of hockey, uh, sort of uh, in terms of North American as well as uh, internationally, uh, with a focus on minority hockey mm -hmm. in particular. And uh, uh, they're, they're a very different group, uh, rather uh, two brothers very different in terms of uh, their, their passion uh, for the game and particularly the aspects of uh, uh, black hockey uh, in, which in, in which they've, as I said, have produced the book. Mm -hmm. But also they're, they're trying to uh, uh, promote uh, black ice mm -hmm. and they have been working very closely with uh, a group in Halifax uh, which uh, has been uh, put on, which has put on a, um, uh, a conference uh, black Ice uh, Hockey and Sports uh, uh, Conference in 2006, 2007, 2008 uh, as a means of uh, promoting uh, black hockey but also honoring uh, those and recognizing those that have participated in the Colored Hockey League mm -hmm. as well as uh, other sports. Mm -hmm. um, wasn't uh, Willie O'Ree uh, honored at one of those events? Yes, those Willie was mm -hmm. honored in mm -hmm. 2007 mm -hmm. uh, because uh, in uh, 2008 mm -hmm. it would have been the 50th anniversary mm -hmm. okay. of his breaking the color, color barrier. barrier. Mm -hmm. So he was the uh, the special guest, mm -hmm. uh, you might say, at this conference. Mm -hmm. So why why is it important? Um, for those of us in the black community to know this this history I mean as you know you know we are more into football baseball cricket and soccer especially the more recent mm -hmm. uh, black immigrants to Canada why should we care basically yeah. um, as uh, blacks and as Canadians uh, for me mm -hmm. uh, uh, Hockey uh, is uh, is Canada's sport. <laughs> uh, there, there is a burning passion uh, for the game, and it's uh, a uh, a key part of our uh, cultural heritage. Uh, and also, uh, hockey is is much more than a sport. Uh, it has to do with um, uh, social history, uh, social history, uh, which is is interwoven uh, with society and also uh, the, the fact that it's, uh, uh, it has to do with the, the, the evolution of, of Canada mm -hmm. uh, as a country and as a nation. Mm -hmm. And uh, for me, I, I think to, to not uh, uh, embrace and uh, acknowledge the, the, the contributions uh, of the the blacks to the development of hockey is uh, uh, renders uh, uh, sort of um, uh, a willingness not really to to uh, give it.